Greetings again from St. Jude Parish in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. I'm Father Michael Irwin, a uh, happy pastor here at St. Jude's in Wauwatosa. It's my honor to be able to pray with you today, to look at our scripture readings uh, for this, the last weekend of February, and to recognize how it's a natural call for us to go into the Lenten journey. Let us do so by remembering how we entered the faith through our baptism. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Loving God, we ask you to open our hearts by reflecting on our sins and being open to your grace. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the humble. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call sinners to become saints. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you build up your church. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Almighty God, grant that, always pondering spiritual things, we would carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Sif with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Sif. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldier, soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricades with his spear thrust into the ground near his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will, need, I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him. For who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from that, their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each one for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those with, from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given back to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. From the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we've been studying this Gospel of Luke. We've been making our way through this scripture reading and in do so we start putting these various pieces together. Uh, so we heard a couple weeks ago about how we're supposed to have an acceptable year of the Lord. And what does that look like? It means release to prisoners. It means giving food to the hungry. It, it means to allow freedom for those who are held captive and to give relief to the oppressed. It means a whole series of things. And in the Gospel of Luke, it's Jesus saying to us so clearly, it's, it's really about caring for the poor and to be able to lift them up. And there's a woe, there's a condemnation for any of us who find ourselves um, wealthy, but not willing to share, not willing to look out after the person who comes after us. And this is said in other ways in other gospels, as Jesus condemns the rich person who pays no attention to the poor person, Lazarus, at the end of their driveway. Um, God gets very upset about this. We don't hear Jesus saying that a whole bunch of different reasons are going to um, automatically get you into hell, but there's something about having resources and being unwilling to share them with others is something that seems to really get Jesus wound up and upset. So that's one component of being able to do this acceptable year of the Lord and and to be able to live out this pattern of getting us all onto a level playing field. But another part of getting us all onto a level playing field is this message of forgiveness, as well as the message of forgiveness that comes next week as we build into this Lenten season, that we are to find a way to uh, reconcile ourselves to people who did things wrong to us. And 
This is something that I get to see all the time in my previous parish. In my previous assignment, which was near Waupon, Wisconsin, we had a whole series of prisons there that had a total of about 4,000 prisoners. So uh, most of us priests and deacons and lay people up there at some point or another, another gets to be involved with prison ministry. I ended up doing prison masses for many years and, and finally had a time to get into the whole thing, to be able to comprehend what it's all about, uh, this whole prison system, because 90% of the people who go into prison come back out of prison. And what's the plan? What's the plan to be able to care for them there? There's a lot of people, actually in both political parties, who really believe we should be doing a thing called prison reform, where we really do have a real sentence for people who've done something wrong, but a part of that sentence is to identify what went wrong with their lives, spend the resources necessary to be able to help that person get perspective and healing, give them a time to prove that they're kind of putting their life together, and if they are putting their lives together, to get them then out of the prison system, you know, and reward them for taking the whole process seriously. It's called prison reform. It's different than what we do in Wisconsin here. I don't know if you know this. We have this truth and sentencing law, which has a good ring to it, but really at the end of the day, ends up spending a lot of money keeping people in prison. And when their terms are up, they get released. And we never came to understand that that's going to just send people out into the world who didn't get any better and, and, and we end up spending more money in that process. And so maybe we could dive into this gospel reading to understand our spiritual motive that we do that. Because in order to change how we care for people who've hurt us, you know, we've got to have an ability to truly forgive. Not always because they've somehow earned it from us or because um, we were paid back in some other way from another direction. This truly is a matter of taking a, a gift maybe we have where we can pass on this forgiveness we received from Christ to other people and, and that, in exchange for that, know that that's our hope on our final judgment day. If we want to not be judged, we need to stop judging. And we need to find a way to be able to uh, reestablish people whose lives are in a hole and somehow get them back onto the same playing field as the rest of us. The gospel reading for uh, the 28th of February, uh, the last Sunday before heading into the um, into Ash Wednesday and the Lenten season talks about taking the splinter, it, about taking the plank out of your eye before taking the splinter out of somebody else's eye. This is a big challenge for us. I think especially in this time of postmodernism where we just kind of run with our feelings and don't want to have to share a reality all the time with other people, and especially during COVID, where we all had very strong opinions, we all had very strong fears going on for a whole variety of reasons, we kind of went on a pattern of being really blunt with each other. But the bluntness was, was always about the other person's fault. Our bluntness wasn't about, you know, this is my part of the problem. This is where maybe I'm making a mistake in life and maybe how I can get better. As we get ready for Lent, as we head into Ash Wednesday, let us really use this as a season to receive forgiveness for all that stuff we just did that was wrong, and we know it's wrong, and to pass on that forgiveness to other people. Even at St. Jude's, even in this area of Wauwatosa, certainly in our broader community, we are really at odds with each other. It's pretty unsustainable, isn't it? You know, can God call us out of that by giving us a remarkable Lenten season where the forgiveness of God pours upon us and we ask for and receive the grace to be able to forgive other people, all starting from this perspective of not worrying so much, 
about the sins of our brothers or sisters, but rather understanding the fundamental mistake, the plank in our eye that might be dominating our lives and to work on our side of the street first. When we receive that grace to find reconciliation from our side of the street, then we're in a better position to more lovingly and more with the perspective of God, be able to take on that gift to other people. So just to give you a little heads up of what's happening this year for Ash for Lenten season, of course, Ash Wednesday is March 2nd. We have a series of liturgies at 6.45 in the morning. Nine o'clock is our school mass. And after the nine o'clock mass is when our Women of St. Jude's event is happening. It's gonna be in the cafeteria of the school building, so we have more space to spread people out. So there hopefully is room for everybody. But then we're gonna do like a 1215 Liturgy of the Word with distribution of ashes in church, and then a 530 mass as well. This is gonna be our theme. We're gonna have lots of opportunities for people to engage their faith. We may not do as many of these programs uh, going into the future. It's gonna be important for us to come back to church and see this as an opportunity to say, you know, we have a lot of different prayers here. This church is huge, it can hold 800 people. And we have many spaces that we can divide and separate away from our, each other so that we can be in person and be able to truly pray for each other. Oftentimes when people send me letters that are they're upset about things around the church, I ch really ask them to pray with their family of faith. Pray together as a parish because the family that prays together stays together. It's really no much more complicated than that. And to come together to receive the Eucharist because that source and summit, that Eucharist, is gonna hold us together. So anyways, we have a number of options for Ash Wednesday, and we're gonna have Stations of the Cross on Friday evenings at 7 p.m. So reconciliation will be after our Saturday morning Mass, which is at 8.15. Usually there's plenty of room in church at that Mass if you want to come to church and to experience church in that way. But you'll see within our schedule and on our website, a lot of cool things happening for in our cluster area where we're gonna have a a uh, reflection on the Mass at, at St. Sebastian's Church on March 23rd. We're going to have a cluster kind of Wauwatosa wide reconciliation on April 5th at St. Margaret Mary. And, and then, of course, you'll start seeing ahead all of our plans for Holy Week and the like. In any case, it's meant to be a time of blessing. And what do we really need, if we're being honest with ourselves, but the gift of forgiveness? May that forgiveness start with me, myself, and I first so that we can have the gift to be able to take that out to other people. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for each other so that we are, well, so when we are feeling judgmental, we would have the grace to reflect on our own mistakes and to gain perspective. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all who are preparing for sacraments of initiation during this Easter season, that their experience of Christ in baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation will be a lifelong gift to them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our own ongoing conversion during this season of Lent. May we truly feel forgiveness for our sins and reach out with the gift of forgiveness to each other. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who are sick, especially those who are homebound, that they will always have ways to connect with their church and to receive the gift of healing. We pray to the Lord. Now let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May God assist you in your home environment, 
If you need something from the church, please give us a call here at St. Jude the Apostle Parish. We'd be happy to be able to come out and visit with you and to pray with you in your homes as well and maybe help you with other needs if you need that as well. So in any case, it's our blessing to be able to uh, be with you and may God send his blessings upon you as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be well. And thank you for Michael Bacho and our music department uh, by being able to provide this beautiful music today.